Hey, so we're sitting here in my uh, Hellfire Mac with uh, looking at another Hellfire Mac. So today's topic is a pretty brief tutorial on health and energy budget and compensating. So we're going to go over uh, basically making armor today, I think is about the gist of it, at least basic armor. So the concept in operation here is we have health and we have energy. I shouldn't need to explain either of those. In fact, I'm not going to. That's just downright moronic in concept. So the simplest way to put this is uh, health and energy ratios are not constant. As covered in the last episode, dummy blocks provide no health or energy, or perhaps a very microscopic, and I mean basically microscopic amount. Uh, heavy material provides three times the health bonus and two times energy bonus, roughly for both of those, compared to light material, but weighs ten times as much and has either one-tenth or infinitely less buoyancy. So, in essence, when we talk about what makes a mech tough, it's pretty good to acknowledge a couple things here. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and check out this mech, for example. The mech is pretty tanky because it is almost, in fact, it may be almost a 100% heavy chassis design with heavy armor plating and many, many, many stages. This bot, while I would say it has a pretty good kick to its guns to put a good dent in someone's teeth, its best aspect is the fact that for its small and light frame, it is not only fast, it is not only potentially deadly, and it is not only tactically flexible, but it is insanely cockroach durable. It is moronic. I'm not even joking. This thing can take on bots about twice its size, sometimes more, and win about 50-50, you know, and not bad odds at all. So, um, the other thing to note, um, and this is kind of on the concept of armor plating, which we're going to go over in a moment. Before you think about armor plating, I'm just going to throw this out here in case shenanigans happen. Uh, when you do armor plating, you are essentially layering the machine in a way that uh, the machine itself will divert from taking core damage and instead take part in HP bar damage. Uh, the simplest way to describe this is core damage will be taken at a more rapid rate per its chunk than will the part damage. I mean, if you have a big pelvis with made of good material even, your core is going to give before your pelvis is going to give. I mean, if you found a way to rewire that pelvis to be your giant chunk of armor and your core to be a small piece, you would extend your lifetime in whole damage, or I mean, part damage servers. So let's explain that. Armor plating is a moronic concept in whole damage servers. The difference between part and whole damage servers is you can't have parts broken in whole damage. Uh, and your HP bar is determined almost entirely by the chunk that uh, your core is based in. This is an incredibly, incredibly moronic concept in my book. The idea that you could be an entire robot, but if your core is in your pelvis or your chest or your head, your entire HP bar that will kill you from being hit anywhere in your arms to your pinky toes will be based on that tiny chunk, which is really disproportionate. So it's nice to say, on the whole, as it is not only the default setting, but the superior setting, and for many reasons, I believe, logistically, uh... Part damage is the almost unanimous choice of servers these days for what are the alternatives to go to. So we're going to go and sit down and do some serious damage to this Hellfire real quick using our Hellfire. We're just going to shoot the chest using uh, standard tank guns against the uh, Kevlar plating. And we're just going to plow this dude for days. This thing is entirely layered to be able to take a massive amount of punishment. As I've already demonstrated, you can tell this thing should already be dead by how many bullets it put in its pelvis. Jesus Christ, just look at this. This is insane. The pelvis is almost gone now, I think. Dear God, this thing is a cockroach. Yeah. And behind that, we have the core, which I am failing to shoot due to precision reasons. But at any point in time, I probably could have shot that core and done a significant sum of damage to it. But uh, that was a good demonstration for how the entire health bar was used instead of just the core health bar. In fact, I think we might be able to cheat this and shoot this guy in the pelvis anyways. We just shoot it in the rear steel plate. Let's nice little decor. Kiss the cook label. Yep, there we go. Critical hit. See, that shut down the mech quite quickly. So from behind, this mech does have weaknesses. But we've compensated to massively expand the lifespan using a uh, hardened steel plate. So that's mostly just um, covering that piece. So let's cover how the hell you make armor plates. We're going to cover this very briefly here because I think this is good to bring up on the content. Uh, we're already going to have redundant information on in the course of this uh, series, but I just want to make sure I cover everything on the go in that episode in particular. If it is redundant, I will almost certainly list it. I want to make a point of doing that. 
So let's talk about bodies. This piece right here is a number of bodies, 20 bodies to be specific. So a body discerns one chunk from another in terms of damage. To be specific, if you have a turret that aims up and you have a body that's mounted on, the body and the turret that aim up are going to be two different pieces. If you have a turret that aims left to right and then up and down and then a body, you're going to have three pieces. So what determines this is that when you have a non-merge group moving part, we're talking hinge, rotator, or piston, and you assign an order to it versus not having an order. We're going to do this briefly. We're now down to, oh, actually, no, sorry. I think we have some other settings. Yeah, now we're down to 19 on the body. Which is, oh, on the body count, which is quite interesting. Now we are up to 20 again. So what we do in this case, we list 200. I normally just list zero and space out the difference. And I do 100 spring and 100 damper. Let's explain why. So 100 spring and 100 damper will increase the resistance and the return from resistance rates of the piece. We double mounted this anyways to reduce uh, influence from external force. If you want to just be safe to make sure you're not screwing this up, you can either do a double or triple mount rotator as that won't give as easy as a piston to velocity, or you can uh, mount five pistons parallel to each other, which if it sounds like overkill, I absolutely guarantee you it is, and that's why it's great. It won't screw you over, and if you do it, and how we have here of body, uh, divider, body, you will not add excessive body counts, unlike if you went like uh, divider, I'm sorry, uh, body, divider, Random crap, compression pistons, um, actually even then I'm a liar, but you can do some configurations where you do like single columns of compression piston and they'll get to the body where you could be potentially screwing yourself over and adding excess bodies. So check when you add something like this that you're only adding one extra body. So that being covered, now it's kind of a different body. What this means is that when it takes uh, punishment, it will attempt to predict this piece instead of the entire piece. It also means if it isn't the same body as your core, you won't take core damage from being shot. Otherwise, the rule is quite the opposite. So covering that, uh, there's a variety of ways you can do this. We even have some advanced coupler or uh, other piston-based methods. But uh, using light material or heavy material, you can do this quite nicely. In the case of ceramics, we're going to review ceramics really quickly because this is a good concept to go over. We have uh, piston for division. We have a box that is, in this case, uh, I believe, like, a quarter of a block's mass or something like that. And uh, then we have a sled mount at the front of it. What this does is, this is a body. This is something that can be shot. This is extra invisible colliding space for it to be shot instead of the piece it's resting on. We've also spaced it to increase the reliability further, but generally thickness is your best friend. Now, uh, moving on here, uh, what we also have is on the advanced section, we have grouping. So this is a 2 by 3 grid, and we've colored this accordingly. If it's yellow, it's group 1. If it's pink, it's group 2. So by doing this, we actually have 6 bodies across 6 blocks. Because they are different groups for everything except the pistons, they don't stick together, and these are all individually breakable, creating a giant network of breakable chunks. And the best part about ceramics is this heavy plates, if you're wondering. Heavy plates are good for small arms fire and blunt force. Uh, cannon rounds, standard cannon rounds. Mortars, potentially. Swords. Uh, beamers, potentially. I, I would call launchers pretty 50-50. Launchers are kind of in a limbo there, but uh, generally if you get hit by lots of small arms fire, these giant heavy material steel plates can spun up a lot of firepower for their size and keep your ass out of the fire for as long as practically possible. They are great for that. In fact, I love steel plates just because they're simple and easy to use and really nice. But for the case of ceramics, this is kind of a recent development, which um, has essentially superseded my Kevlar concept for many, many, many reasons. The most of which is reliability and size and lack of body count. As this is like six bodies for six layers to get a roughly similar ballistic effect or comparable we are having a single body for each chunk of this, and we can make them wider if we wanted. But the main point of doing this in these tiny little plates is that if you get hit by a heavy weapon, it's going to blow the crap out of that part. If you get hit in your core, you're going to take one hell of it. Hell, you can get one or two shot at any good day. 
I mean, you can get really jacked up by some of the stuff you fight with on a daily basis. So if you're getting into trouble with that and you have a relatively uh, thin surface area you can cover in these tiny ceramic plates um, by layering it in this piston box uh, sled sort of sense, what this will do is that you have lots of tiny pieces with low amounts of HP. If you get hit by a heavy weapon and they hit you right in the chest for a hell of a lot of damage, it's going to blow off one plate. And due to the way how, how screwy collision and angles are, uh, in a lot of the times we just demonstrated earlier against the Hellfire, if you're aiming for one spot, you could be hitting four to eight plates depending on the compression method. Uh, which means if they want to just try and one shot your torso and you have these eight plates on your ground that they're hitting instead, it's going to take them at least eight shots to be able to even get a shot in on your torso. Consider that for a moment. I mean, it might only reduce damage instead of eliminating it, but for the most part, if you do ceramics right, you can stop heavy weapons fire for at least a couple shots. Making ceramics a lightweight, disposable, compact method of armoring your mech against very large arms. So that being said, that covers our first piece for uh, today, and uh, this was all about health, energy, uh, compensating. So uh, until next time, WCCCs. Well, actually, let's mention one more piece while we're being clear here. I almost signed off. Wow, I can't believe we didn't mention this yet. I am so sorry, everyone. But uh, what we have here is the concept that you can add slight amounts of HP or maybe even energy by adding certain parts, weapons, pistons, hinges, etc. But the best way to add energy and health at the same time is to add real chassis blocks, not boxes, not capsules, we're talking real wholesome chassis blocks and possibly making heavy material. We're going to review more on that later and kind of the science of counteracting weight if you want to go with a really heavy build. Especially if you're building a mech or sometimes it's just a really heavy tank, you can actually end up just totally smashing your weight threshold to pieces. So uh, this time for realsies, until next time, WCCC signing out.